Do you want an easy way to manage your genealogy source citations? Well, Roots Magic has an easy tool called the Source Citation Templates. They're fairly easy to use, but stick around because later in this video, I will show you how you can copy your citation and use it multiple times for multiple people for multiple events. There are several places where you can keep track of your source citations in Roots Magic. The first one is when you click on an individual profile and you come to any of the facts, the name, the marriage, the parents, or a birth fact. If you see this little pencil, that's the source. And then over on the right side of the window, you're going to see your different sources. So there's a picture, there's a family Bible, there's a citation from a death certificate, some public records. So there's where you can keep track of your citation. We'll come back to adding citations in a minute. The other location for citations is using the side tab over here. If you click on sources, you're going to see a master list of all of the sources that you have. Now that you know where the source citations are found, let's talk about how to create a new source using a new template. And in this case, I am getting the source from the World War II draft cards for young men over on Ancestry. So my new event is that he's a residing in Columbus in 1944. So over on Roots Magic, I am going to create a new event because I don't have a residence in 1944. So click on the plus button. Now I'm going to type residence. And I'm going to click on residence. And I'm going to click on OK. And if you notice way down here at the bottom, there is a new entry for residence and it will get sorted once I put some details over here on the right. So I have taken the information that was on this document, uh, the date, the place. I looked at the original image and it had a specific street address, so I put that in. And then I added a few more details, which was that he was working at this company. All right, so now what we need to do is click OK. So you can see that I have the residence information, but I don't have the little pencil icon there on the right. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to click add source citation. A window pops up and all of the sources that you've used before are listed here, but I haven't created one for the World War I draft registration. To double check, I can click in this box right here and type World War. I'm just gonna do this for now. And you can see I have drafts for 1942, but I don't have this young men's registration. So I'm going to create a new one. To do that, I come over here to add new source. And I can go ahead and type in draft on the right side, draft. Template list will be filtered to template names that have what you'd search for in it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on draft registration. Now, do you see this gibberish right here? Okay. This is letting you know where this source template comes from. So EE is for evidence explained. It gives you the reference number and the page number. And AQS is from Ancestry Quick Sheet. So if you're trying to create all evidence explained citations, then this is going to be the one you want to choose. Go ahead and click Next. After selecting the template that fits your needs, you can now copy the information from your source, either digitally or for a hard copy source, and put them into the fields in the template and let Roots Magic do its magic. So source name is not going to show up in the actual citation, but it's for you to be able to find the citations in the future. So I'm gonna have it be very similar to what is already in the database. And I'm going to change the 1942 to young men draft registration, just so that it reminds me which one we are utilizing. So now I need the title of the database. I don't like to type into 
the fields if there is the option to copy and paste because you can introduce errors into your databases and your citation. So go ahead and copy and paste the title into the database title. Now the format, we're gonna go ahead and leave this as the digital images. If it's something else, then we can go ahead and switch it there. Creator of the website. I'm going to skip this because it's going to introduce redundancy into the citation, but the title of the website is ancestry.com. Ancestry.com is the URL. Should you include HTTP, HTTPS, www in your URL address? I'm of the opinion that no, because in 2022, if you type in an address without the HTTP, HTTPS, or www dot, you will be taken to that website. So leave it off. It's just wasted space. So now we need the title of the records or the subtitle. This database doesn't necessarily have a title or a subtitle. There is, if you go to Ancestry, this source and it tells you the draft registration cards for Ohio, the records of the selective service, I'm going to actually put that in a different location. So let's go back to Roots Magic. And for now, I'm just going to skip this source text comment and reference. Click on next. And you can see here that the master source that we created is truncated, and now we have the citation. There are two sections to the source citation that template. The master source, which you will use again and again for the same type of source, such as the 1850 census. Then there is the citation details, and this pertains to the specific citation within that master source. So William, in the 1850 census. That would be in the source citation template and it only pertains to that specific entry. If you're still confused, ask questions in the comments below. All right, so the citation name, this is going to be for you to know which person you are actually put, uh, creating a citation for. So I'm going to actually put Robert's name. So Robert P. Geisler, senior, there's a number of different words that you can use to say that you looked at a record and how you looked at it. I usually just leave the default, which is access. You can see access is right here. It'll show up even if you don't put anything there. So I'm just going to leave it blank. Now I need to put a date in which I looked at this. And now I need to talk about my specific person of interest. So for me, I looked at Robert Paul Geisler. So now we have a decision to make because uh, we want identifying pieces of information other than Robert Paul Geisler in case there's a second one. So for me, the most useful piece of information is this birth date. I could go in here and look for a record number. There is the order number, we could use that. There's a serial number, we can use that. Uh, whichever you prefer, I'm just gonna go ahead and use his birth date. Now this database comes from another database since it's Ancestry and they actually came from a different record collection. It comes from the National Archives. So this is when I'm gonna go ahead and grab this information right here and do a copy and paste. And I'm going to leverage Ancestry's use of that citation. So they cited their source and I'm just gonna copy the source just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK and this saves it. Now I can go back and do something that is really neat. If you'll notice, this is italicized in the source citation over on Ancestry as well as this other section, but when I copied and pasted the citation into Roots Magic, you don't see regist draft registration cards italicized. Well, in Roots Magic 8, you can customize that. This is a really neat feature. So click on Customize, and when the window pops up, you can come into the citation that they created and find Draft Registration Card for Ohio, highlight it, and mark it as italicized. Record Group, Records of the Selective Service, I can italicize that. You can bold something, underline it, whatever you want to, because maybe you want to have all URLs with an underscore or underline. You can do that, whichever you want. Make sure that you go down and you save it. And now you can see that there's the italicizing 
in the source citation and there's also the underline. When we go back to the record, we see that there is self-reporting by Robert Geisler. He signed his name and he said his date of birth was 8-22-1926. This is secondary information. Sure, Robert was there when he was born. However, he wasn't aware of what the date was, so his parents told him where he was born. Therefore, that makes it secondary information. Now, while we are talking about secondary information, I like to attach one source to each fact that it documents. So in this case, this record talks about a birth, a location where he's living in 1946, and then it actually gives you next of kin, so I would attach it there as well. There's two ways to do this. The first way is to click on the citation, click on the little copy button to memorize the citation, then go to the pencil icon next to the fact that you're trying to add the citation to, and then you can paste the citation. Now, you're going to be asked, point to the same copy of the citation, or make a copy of the memorized citation to point to that copy. Use reuse citations if you don't want to customize your sources to the multiple places that you're going to place it. Use the paste a copy when you're going to customize it. So let's say you have a census record and one citation is going to say John in the household of William. And then you want to use most of that same content again, but you want it to say it is Mary in the household of Wis William. That is when you use the second option. If you have any more questions, you know what to do. Put them in the comments. So I'm in the sources for the birth, and if I scroll down, I'm going to see the one I made a copy of. And if I click this arrow right here, because I made this as a paste a copy, what I can now do is do information secondary source. It is an original source. And then the evidence, it directly answers the question of when his birth took place. Mark the checkbox. And now I have this citation from the template attached to the birth event right here. So when I click on this residence information, I see the source that I created earlier. I can click on that arrow and I can go and select the source quality as it applies to the residence fact. So this is original information, it's primary because Robert self-purported that he lived at this location on this date. He's, that is his primary information. He knows where he's living on this date. Of course, he could be lying, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to go back and we're going to say he had the primary information and it directly answers the question of where was he living on on the 22nd of August, 1944. Be sure to check out our other Roots Match videos that you should watch next by clicking right up here. And if you want something new, check out this video right here. A source site, source site template. <clears throat>